Good evening and welcome uh, to the Northwest Startup Demo Fall 2010. My name is Steve Johnson. I'm chair of the Northwest Startup Demo branch of the Northwest chapter of the MIT Enterprise Forum. There are 24 worldwide chapters of the MIT Enterprise Forum. The Northwest chapter is based here in Seattle and consists of four branches, the forum events, the Northwest Startup Demo, Venture Lab, and Mix and Mingle events. Now I'd like to introduce Ed Hansen, the Vice Chair of Demo, to uh, introduce the speakers and MC the event. All right, thanks, Steve. Welcome to Demo. I am really excited for the companies we have here today. Uh, they span industries from medical devices, distributed power, social media, scientific research, voice-enabled apps, and internet, and automotive products. So I think every company who's going to come up that you're going to see is going to be quite a bit different from the one before. Now, we get a lot of questions about really what, what is a demo, how do you judge a demo. Uh, my own take on, on this is that a, a demo is fundamentally about creating excitement. It's about showing that you know, the world is a much better place with my product than without it. So hopefully uh, these, these uh, companies will come up and will we'll show off their demos and at least some of you will walk away thinking, wow, I am so glad that stuff like this is coming to our world. Hello everyone, I'm Charles Hemphill from Everspeech. I'm CEO and CTO there. And I'm going to dive right in since I only have eight minutes. We're going to give you three demonstrations. What we do is we make products that speech enable web applications. So I'm going to show you three different web applications, not four here. But uh, the first one will focus on hands free assembly, which is very important. Imagine you're up on a ladder, you're putting together a part of an airplane, you don't know exactly what to do, you got to climb down the ladder, go look at the instruction manual. So to avoid all that, we have the following. So I have I didn't bring an airplane, but I brought some little props here so I can assemble something in front of you. Great demo. That was so cool. Thank you. Uh, congratulations, because uh, that was real smooth, too. Um, uh, several questions. For instance, if you were in the uh, jet engine application, how what we see here has an element to it that's visual. So how is the person who's using it, what are they seeing? Uh, well, actually, we're aiming at tablet PCs so they could put the okay. tablet PC within Perfect. visual range. Okay. Um, we can also do speech out, but speech out is slower versus seeing a picture or seeing what happens. So we can do it either way. Yeah, no, and I think there's a, a cool application there with uh, tech support, too. Yeah, that exactly. Would be, that could be very interesting. I'm Bob Lipp, uh, founder of LipSync Automotive. Uh, we have over here Doug Mitchell, our chief uh, operations officer, and Bob Howe, our chief financial officer. And uh, we, also have, we also have here the uh, product, uh, the throttle box. Uh, what throttle box does is it provides uh, a, a sound system for these new hybrid and all electric cars that run silently. Uh, the way it works is when you step on the gas, the onboard diagnostic port connection tells throttle box that the car is speeding up, and so throttle box will play car speeding up sounds out the speakers. Well, it was cool. It sounds like ringtones for the car, I guess. Exactly. That's, but, a, that's yes. What, I, I wondered about the sounds inside and if there will be some kind of noise cancellation or something like that or how, it, you know, can you, will, will the speakers project outward only or is there a way you can, you know, prevent that sound from getting into the car? Well, the speakers are going to be behind the grill, so that's pretty. That's on the other side of the engine from the passengers inside the car. So the passengers inside the car are probably not going to be hearing much, but there'll be a second port on this box that you can feed into your car stereo. So if you want to listen to the sounds, you turn on the, you press the AUGS in button on your car stereo, and you can hear them. If you don't want to hear the sounds, just turn your car stereo off, and the speaker in front of behind the grill will still be alerting pedestrians, but what you hear inside the passenger compartment, well, not so much. I'm Nikhil George. I'm the uh, chief engineer at a company called Mobisante. What we've done at Mobisante is build the world's first ultrasound machine on a cell phone. Ultrasound machines today are the size of this podium, cost anywhere up of $50,000, and occupy a whole room. So in other words, ultrasound machines today are like what mainframe computers were in the 1960s. What we've done is we've taken all that technology and shrunk it down into this. So this is commodity hardware. It's a cell phone. So it's going to cost a fraction of what that custom machine costs. Can you describe a little bit what, about what you have done for, uh, is it clinical trials? Or you know, where are you in the process of having people use this? 
So um, what we're doing really are we have a bunch of hospitals out there using it as beta users. Um, and we're going through the uh, FDA approval process right now. Um, so we don't technically need, from a legal perspective, to have uh, clinical trials because this is an equivalent device to something that already exists. But you know, obviously, we're doing beta trials you know, just to make sure that we're, we're hitting the spot that we think we should be hitting. Uh, my name is Tom Nugent. I'm from Laser Motive. And what Laser Motive does is transmit energy to any place where it is either too expensive or impractical to run wires. What I have in this hand is a laser. Coming out of that end can be as much as a kilowatt of light. That's one and a half horsepower of light coming out of there. In this hand, there's a specialized photovoltaic, a solar cell, that converts that light into electricity. Then I aim that laser light across the intervening miles up to to this, where it converts that light back into electricity. And now I can use that to, to run a motor to charge a battery, to do any sort of work. And so what this is, is extending the grid out beyond where it can currently reach. Uh, Tom, can you talk a little bit about the NASA uh, competition and, and what you guys had to demo there to win the prize? So this, th this competition was uh, run for uh, many years. No one had won it. We came in, and they had been making it harder and harder. They had, out in the Mojave Desert, this, this giant helicopter hanging a cable. And we had to make a little thing that would climb that cable uh, powered only from the ground. And not only were we the only group that actually made it to the finish line, uh, we actually doubled uh, the requirements for the first level prize that we won. So we brought in uh, $900,000 of prize money from NASA. Good evening. My name is Adina Bangabat, and I'm the CEO of Spiral Genetics. Spiral Genetics is a company that is revolutionizing the way that genetic analysis is performed. Genetic information is incredibly important for the medical field, for example. Uh, its effect on cancer treatment so far has already been very profound, and it's also great for um, dosing of prescription drugs. But right now, its use is limited, and we're going to talk today why th about why that is and talk about how we've solved that problem. We are allowing this kind of technology to expand into new markets like the emerging clinical markets in pharmaceuticals and things like that. And so looking to the future, this kind of technology is going to be crucial for ushering in the age of advanced personalized medicine where everyone has their genome sequenced, it's part of your medical record, and drugs are being developed based on specific genetic markers. Thank you very much. Will the interface and the tools that you've built here also be available eventually for companies that want to run it in-house as you know high performance computing comes down to price mm -hmm. and things like that? Absolutely. Um, we actually have built it on top of open source, thing, source uh, distributed computing frameworks like Hadoop, um, if you're familiar with that. So as long as you have a cluster, we can install Hadoop and run this right on top of it. So if you want, if you're a big pharmaceutical company, for example, and you want to run this in-house, you can do that. Hi, this is uh, Srinivas Pinamaka. I'm a co-founder and CEO of uh, Social Yantra. We are an early stage uh, startup company based in uh, Sammamish, Washington. As a quarter million fans, I have a, a very big fan page. At the same time, when I look at it, I have simply no way of knowing when a new post is coming in. If I am a customer support manager, it's very difficult to understand which of these posts require my attention unless I read each and every one of them. At the same time, there is no easy way to track if there is a post that needs to be followed up on. So this gives you a quick snapshot of uh, what's going on on the page. We can see the sentiment, which is dripping for a while. We know a couple of uh, reasons for that. We will check it out in our trends page. And uh, there is a volume statistics here. Uh, Social Yantra, how does that help the, uh, the enterprise respond to customers and Facebook and those kind of things? How? It looks like there's some analysis tools here, but you know, how then are they able to respond in an <coughs> organized way to right. all the chatter that may be out there? Uh, let me uh, try to log in here. Uh, basically, we connected to the CRM system where you can actually use your workflows and business processes, and you can assign to the appropriate queues, and then connect it to the appropriate agents. So when we give the data, we can identify based on the text analysis of the conversations where they go to. So if the issue is related to a particular shipments or uh, billing or things like that for, for any type of online retailer, for example, we can go to those kinds of uh, agents who are equipped to doing it. This being our eighth event, and it was uh, apparently the, uh, the best group of 
of companies. So congratulations to all of you. And as Ed said, uh, um, you know, only one person gets the thing, but you know, you're all winners, right? So. Uh, <laughs> So now for the big moment, and yes, again, the judges, um, it was, it took a couple of rounds to zero in on the winner. This was uh, uh, very, very close, and uh, as we mentioned any other time, I, a whole number of them could have, could have won. But the voting came out, and by the slimmest of margins, the winner uh, is uh, Laser Motive. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, go to lasermotive.com to see all the cool stuff we're going to be up to. Always be closing, right? <laughs> Thank you all for attending. And please do remember to uh, drop off your uh, plastic name badge sleeves. Uh, that saves us a lot of, a lot of cash. Anyway, have, have a good night. And we'll see you next May for the next one. <laughs>